Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's for Sunday, December 5th, the second Sunday in Advent, not the first. I noticed there's a typo, my fault. I didn't catch that uh, when printing. Before we begin our service, we acknowledge the land that we are gathered on is the traditional territory first of the neutral people, then the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. It also remind us, reminds us that our great standard of living is directly related to the Indigenous people's resources and their friendship. Please stand for our opening hymn number 103 on Jordan's Bank. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, it's there again, my mistake. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your servant John the Baptist to prepare your people to welcome the Messiah. Inspire us, the ministers and stewards of your truth, to turn our disobedient hearts to you, that when the Christ shall come again to be our judge, we may stand with confidence before his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Can I have both my readers to come to speak? Read, please. Who's the other reader? Who's the other reader? Oh, okay, go ahead, Pat, thanks. <laughs> Do it again. 
month of Advent, we remember the gift of peace we have in Christ. Peace is a gift that we must be prepared for and must work for. God gives us the gift of peace when we turn to him, working together in faith. Through John the Baptist and all the other prophets, God asks us to prepare the way of the Lord, whom the prophet Isaiah calls the Prince of Peace. As we light this candle today, we look with hope for the day that Christ's peace will reign in our hearts, in our homes, in our communities, and in our world. As we light this candle, we are reminded to work for the peace of Christ, to come and take root in us. Let us pray, loving God. We thank you for the gift of peace you give us through Jesus. Help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming by working for Christ's peace to take root in our family. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. <clears throat> no, I'm going to carry. The first reading is from the book of Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. This messenger of the covenant in whom you delight indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the de descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they pr present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Be to Today we are reading Canticle number 19. The response to the canticle is, The dawn from on high shall break upon us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a, a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The dawn from on high shall break upon us. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. The dawn from on high shall break upon us. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. The dawn from on high shall break upon us. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The dawn from on high shall break upon us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen.
The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Philippines. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of you sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to a completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart, for all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. This is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with the knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in that day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and the praise of God. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In the fifteenth year of the reign of the Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judah, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother was the ruler of the region of Itraea and Trachonitis, 
and Lysanias, ruler of Albaline, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it was written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out of the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, make every valley, every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So uh, we are in the second Sunday of Advent. Uh, this week we are going to be talking about peace. Last week we looked at hope and redemption. And, you know, despite our human frailties with the second coming of Christ, we have the hope of knowing that uh, we will be forgiven, which is wonderful. Peace. Peace is one of those words that you hear a lot at Christmas time. You know, peace be with you. It's on your cards, your Christmas cards. Um, I haven't seen a lot in this area, but in Burlington, there was always people who had signs on their front lawn that, you know, said, peace be with you during this Christmas season. They were everywhere. Um, peace can be a little trendy at this time of the year. The thing about peace, it's, it's an interesting concept. It, it's something that we as society have been basically fighting for since the beginning of time, literally. World War I, you know, the Great War, the war to end all wars, was supposed to bring us peace. Unfortunately, yeah, we don't, we don't have it. Preaching during Advent, uh, you know, it's a little awkward because we're supposed to be talking about peace and joy and love and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, when I, when I look around the world, you know, it's pretty ugly. And there's a lot of sadness and a lot of, you know, hard stuff going on. Um, but I always promised myself that I would try really hard not to be one of those priests that, you know, browbeat you with all the negative, you know and you know, have you walking out of here feeling guilty? That's, that's not what I want. Um, but I also don't want to pretend like you know, the, the world is filled uh, with rainbows, unicorns, and cotton candy. Cotton candy would be great, but it's not. Um, there needs to be this balance of life, you know? This balance of where, yes, we do see the hardness of the world, but we are also able to see those breathtaking moments of God and his love and God's grace. Peace. Peace is defined as the freedom from disturbance and tranquility. Free from disturbance and tranquility. So how can we find peace? How can we bring peace to the world, peace to the community, and peace to one another? Well, I guess we need to answer a few questions, really. I said, are we peacemakers? Are we actually peacemakers? Like, in our own families, are we peacemakers? Are we the ones who try to heal the difficulties and the strife that happens within our families? Or are we the ones that stir the pot? How are we building our community? Are we working to build our community in a peaceful manner, in a loving manner? Are we putting up walls and saying, mm, nope, we're full? Or better yet, yeah, you can come, but here's all the hoops you need to jump through first to get in. How do we look and talk, to, um, how do we look at other countries? How do we look at other cultures? How do we look at other people with different sexuality, skin color? How are we treating those people? Peace on earth starts with our own attitudes, believe it or not, to help us to support and encourage peace, we need to have inner peace. We need to have inner peace so we can feel the Holy Spirit, we can feel God's love. 
Now, inner peace, you might think, well, Jody, that's kind of trendy as well. And you might be right. It's, it is a little. Um, inner peace really isn't a new concept. It has been rebranded, though. It's now called mindfulness. And mindfulness, by my husband's definition, is you know, the fact that I know his coffee cup is empty and I need to get it filled for him. Um, but that's not really it. Mindfulness is essentially the human ability to be fully present in the moment, to be aware of where you're at and what is happening at that moment, and not to be overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on. Inner peace refers to mental and spiritual peace, enough knowledge and understanding to keep oneself strong in the face of discord and stress. It's about not overthinking, not overanalyzing, and accepting the things we cannot change from our past. So I think inner peace really is a, it's a beautiful combination of those two de definitions. Being able to be present and aware of where you're at and what's going on. Inner peace is incredibly important because it is our way to God. It is our way to feel and accept the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Inner peace allows us to understand our past hurts, our past pain, and to grow and flourish from them. I am going to make an, a, an assumption here that everybody here is baptized. If you're not, come talk to me afterwards. We'll, we'll fix you up. But if you are baptized, then you know that baptism is an outward, visible sign of an inward, spiritual grace given unto us by Christ. That is the Anglican textbook definition of baptism. Outward, visible sign of an inward, spiritual grace. Absolutely beautiful. John the Baptist was telling his followers to prepare for God. You had to be baptized. You had to be baptized, according to John. Now, Jesus came. He was baptized by John, which is kind of odd, because really, Jesus didn't have to be baptized, because Jesus was God, is God. But Jesus is also a great teacher and a great leader. So he was baptized so we could see the joy and the love that we receive when we are baptized. We can see the grace that God gives us through him when he was baptized and the grace that we get when we are baptized. So we are baptized and we have received the Lord's grace. But as I have said many times, we are human and we make mistakes. John tells us we need to repent to prepare for the way of the Lord, which is wonderful. And asking God for forgiveness is something actually we do every week before we receive communion. We have the confession. We ask God for forgiveness. But those, when we ask for forgiveness, it needs to be sincere, you know, God knows the difference between I'm truly sorry and, you know, I got my hand caught in the cookie jar type of sorry. He knows the difference. And for us to know the difference, I think there's things that we need to do. Because I think there's, when it comes to forgiveness, you know, sometimes we need to forgive somebody else, but sometimes it's just we need to forgive ourselves. So I think for us to reach inner peace, we need to look at a few things. One, we need to look at our lives and we need to acknowledge the things that we have done wrong and we need to own that, you know? Really, really own it. There's a, there's a logic with owning it. You know, like somebody who's an alcoholic and has been sober for 20 years and goes, when they go to an AA meeting, hi, my name is and I am an alcoholic, you know? They're owning it. And by owning it, they stay grounded, they stay focused, and hopefully God gives them the strength not to take a drink again. Our land territorial acknowledgments, we are saying it to own our past, to own what our ancestors did, to acknowledge the fact that we cause great harm and great hurt. That's why we're saying it. That's why it's so important. 
We need to own our mistakes and learn from them. Once we've figured out our mistakes, we need to then actually sincerely apologize with no buts. It's just, I'm sorry. No justification, no explanation, no whatever. Just, I'm sorry. Now, if the person that you're apologizing to says, okay, I need to know why you did what you did, of course, offer them an explanation, but don't let the explanation take away from the, I'm sorry. Don't let the explanation take away from the, I'm sorry. The other part of the, our, our apologies, the thing that you need to know, forgiveness, we say the confession in our service, the original understanding for the sign of peace was to offer forgiveness. It was before you received communion, you were given the second opportunity to go to whoever was in your congregation, whoever you went to church with, whoever you may have wronged, and go up to them and say, may God's peace be with you and me. And like, let's make things right between you and me. That's what the sign of peace is about. It's about wishing that person well and hoping that that person wishes you well back and that, you know, forgiveness has been had. It's great for us to apologize, and that's wonderful, but you also need to be able to accept apologies. So that person, that one that you swear you will never, ever forgive, when they come to you and say, I'm sorry, we need to accept that. We do, we need to accept that. We're called to accept that, and I'll explain that in a minute. And this one's harder, this, this last one's harder, is that we need to be able to forgive that person who we're never gonna hear I'm sorry from. Whether it be because they're dead, or because they're just too stubborn to realize that they hurt you or that they did anything wrong. But they too need to be forgiven. Because forgiveness is so important because if we do not forgive, there is no inner peace. Because if we don't forgive, we get all this anger and resentment inside us that causes great emotional, physical, and spiritual harm. It eats away at us, truly it does, and puts great distance between you and the Lord. Having all that anger and resentment, it clouds our thinking, it clouds our expectations of the world around us. And we sometimes don't even realize it because we don't understand that we're even angry, but you mention somebody's name and oh, there it is, there it is. The misconception with forgiveness is that people think that if you say, I forgive you, that somehow you're condoning the bad behavior. You're condoning the injustice that happened to you. And you're not. You're not. Forgiving somebody is not about them. Forgiving somebody is, is you. It's you saying, I am not going to let the harm that you caused me have power over me anymore. It's about, I'm going to forgive you because I don't want this anger in me and I want to be closer to the Lord. And by staying angry at you and not forgiving you, I'm not, I'm not in a good place. So forgiveness is about you releasing that power over from that person. And as I said, we are actually called to forgive. It's a directive from Jesus. In Luke, we hear, pay attention to yourself. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. We also hear from Luke, uh, judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Here's the wonderful thing about God. You know, we have already received our Lord's grace. We've already received so many blessings. It's all there. It's inside of us. It really is. But if you are struggling in any way, shape, or form, you know, just have a lovely conversation with God. You know, 
God, I'm angry and I am hurt and I am tired of feeling this way. I would love to have some inner peace. I would love to show the world your peace and your love, Lord. Please, Lord, help me. Now, I'm not saying that God will answer your prayer right away. As you know, God's time and our time, you know, technically not the same. I wish he would work on my time because the whole prayers would be answered a lot faster. But, you know, God likes to let things sit for a while. But I do believe that God will give you the strength that you need. John was helping the people of Jesus' time to prepare for Jesus' first coming. And we now need to heed his words so we can prepare for Jesus' second coming. How do we find peace? How do we bring peace into this world? Well, I think we need to take a good look at ourselves and see, do I have inner peace? Do I have inner peace? Is there something I need to do? Is there somebody I need to forgive? Whether it be, you know, somebody, an actual person outside. Maybe it's myself. Maybe I just need to forgive myself for something. And how can I work with others to share God's peace and build the Lord's kingdom? I can't answer these questions for you. These are questions you need to sit and ponder yourself. But I'm going to end with a little prayer. Loving and gracious Lord, we have come together today to hear your words and prepare for your second coming. We ask that you fill us with the Holy Spirit, fill us with your love and your grace. Give us the strength we need to find our own inner peace. Give us the strength we need to forgive ourselves, forgive those who have hurt us. Allow us to see the grace that we will receive when we help to share your love and your peace with others. Give us the strength to continue to be disciples and to lead others to you. We ask this in your son's holy name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
wherever we are in the wilderness, the countryside, or the city, God, you are there. That our hearts may be stirred up in thanksgiving for the life you have given us. Let us pray, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the gifts of creation, for the sun that lights our day and the moon and stars that shelter the night, may our eyes be open to the beauty around us, the subtle changes in the sky, the delicate coating of soil from which breaks forth our food and flowers, and in which animals make their home. Help us to protect and nurture your creation around us and ever proclaim its wonders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the church in every place, may we ever be mindful of the richness of the family of the church. Today in our parish, we pray for George Duma, Charlotte Dusso, Matt and Kara Eberly, Robert and Nicole Ebert, and their families. We pray for persons next to us in the pew, those in neighborhood churches, those in every nation and economic circumstance. We give thanks for the care and leadership of our Bishop Susan, our priest Jody, and husband Michael. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in authority, let us pray for Christians who witness in places hostile to the gospel. And let us be thankful for our freedom to practice our faith. Let us pray for the leaders of the nations that Christ may transform strangers into friends that may see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this community in our joys and sorrows, let us remember those who have gone before us. And today, remembering especially Myrna Davis, sister of Nancy Rivers and Don Roy. Let us remember Nancy and Bill, their family, and the Roy family today. We pray for those who have sacrificed for us. Help us to look for what is below the obvious and from this depth to reach out to others. Help us to know that joy that's mingled even with our grief. Let us give thanks for this gathering of God's people and for the renewal of life we are given. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those at greatest risk among us, let us pray for those lonely, rejected, or oppressed, for the sick and those who struggle to regain their strength. Today we're asking healing for John Butt, Eleanor Sharuk, Mary Cullen, Blake Dayball, Elizabeth Ebert, Marion Empey, Louise Hayton, Robert Krasick, Nancy Lisk, Dominic, Julia, Donna, Megan, Anthony, Tammy, Derek, and Elaine. We pray for those among us with the longest memories to link us to the past and for the newborn in whose baptism our baptism is again renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, gather up our prayers with those of all your people in every place and as you prepare the way, making every valley filled and every mountain brought low in blessing and adoration, guide us to Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your wills and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you and pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. strength. We are nothing without you. Receive all we offer you this day as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. Now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world, that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and of his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them anew, and bring us to the city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are ours, yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happier are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. For my dear friends who are watching who could not be here with us today, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now, many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, so many, and make us one in you. Amen.
stand. Let us pray. Faithful God, we thank you for feeding us with this heavenly banquet. Help us to always to hear the prophet's call and turn our hearts to you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord, amen. amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul, and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God the Father and Son and Holy Spirit be with you today and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for just one or two announcements. <laughs> Actually, it's really short today. It is short. No judgment. Uh, yeah, no, just two things. Um, I know you've gotten the Meekin, and hopefully you've read it, and you've marked these dates on your calendar, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to announce them until they actually happen. Uh, Sunday, December the 19th at the 1030 service, it will not be a Eucharistic service. We are doing lessons in carol. So I want you to know that. So it's going to be a special service, a uh, different service. I'm really looking forward to it. So hopefully you will join us. Uh, Tuesday, December the 21st at 6.30 p.m., we are having what is called a Blue Christmas. Uh, a Blue Christmas, is, it's a service of healing. It's a service for those who have lost maybe a loved one or maybe lost a job or just, you know, you're just struggling, you know. Christmas is one of those seasons where we are always supposed to be happy but for many of us, it's really not, you know? It's a hard season, it really, really is. So this is a service of healing where you just get to come and be, you know? Nobody's expecting you to be joyful. Um, but I need you to know that this service is ecumenical, which means other churches are going to be invited to it. So I do need you, if you are going to come, I need you to call and reserve. Let me know you're coming to this one. Um, I know we've taken away the reservation thing, but for this, this one I need because, um, yeah, uh, it will be also live streamed. So if you um, want to watch a live stream, you can. But this is, it is a beautiful service, and I do hope that you will come. Again, I just want to throw out there for Christmas Eve at the 4 o'clock service and the 9 o'clock service, I'm not asking you to call in reserve. I'm just asking you to call and let me know if you're coming and how many people you're bringing. Um, basically, so we can prepare for overflow if we need to. Uh, overflow is going to go in the hall. And so right now for the 4 o'clock service, I have about 10 people who said they're coming. And for the 9 o'clock, I have about 10 people who said they're coming. So... I get the feeling there's more of you, so if you could just let me know, that would be fantastic. Love it. Um, and that's it. That's all I got. So our close, please stand for our closing hymn, 108. Please and thank you. Mm -hmm. 